Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Crimin Ollie, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today I want to talk about the strange international fame of Richard Lehman. So Richard Lehman, if you don't know, was an American horror author who was particularly prolific during the 80s and 90s. So his first novel, The Cellar, uh, was published in 1980 and was quite a big hit. Um, He continued writing throughout the 80s and 90s. He died, sadly, in 2001. And there were two or three books of his that were published posthumously. Um, But the bulk of his work was published during the 80s and 90s. And he published a lot, a few dozen novels, loads of short stories. He was a very, very prolific writer. Um, And his style of writing can can best be described as being a bit like a low-budget American B-movie from the 80s. So kind of cheesy horror but mixed with a lot of sex as well so his characters are often obsessed with sex particularly obsessed with the female form and layman spends a lot of his time as a as a writer describing women's bodies so his books can come across as a bit creepy um, and a lot of people don't like them as a result but he does still have his fans um What's interesting about Lehman, though, is um, that he was never particularly successful in the States. So an American writer and his books are, you know, for the, for the most part, set in America and have a very American feel to them. You know, they're often about groups of teenagers and young people, um, you know, kind of living in middle America, doing the kind of things that, that teenage Americans do, but then getting involved in like weird, horrific goings on. Um, so, yeah, as I say, his first book, The Cellar, um, was quite a big hit. Um, his second book, uh, The Woods Are Dark, was much less successful. And, and Lehman blamed this on the fact that the publishers made a lot of edits to it. So they cut out about 50 pages of, of content. You can now get an unedited version of it that's, that was published after his death. Um, but yeah, he felt that those cuts, those changes to his book, um, kind of destroyed his career. He continued to write. He continued to you know get, get his books published. But he never achieved the kind of mainstream success that authors like Stephen King or Dean Koontz um, managed to achieve during the 80s and 90s. Um, So in the States, his books were mostly published by Leisure Books, um, who published, you know, a load of paperback horror during that same period. So so Lehman ended up in the States, I think, just feeling like another author who was being published through Lehman alongside loads of others. He never really got a chance to to stand out. Um, What's interesting, though, is internationally, he was really quite successful. Um, He was more successful than, you know, any of those other leisure authors. Um, So I, you know, clearly am in the UK and I remember seeing his books all the time in the 80s and 90s. I first came across him um, in my local library and read, I think it was um, Out of the Lights was the the first of his books that I read. Um, and always enjoyed his stuff as a as a teenager. I think it kind of speaks to to, to teenage uh, teenage males because of that obsession with with sex. Um, so yeah, headline in the, in the UK um, particularly published his books, and I remember these headline editions. You know, seeing them all the time in, in bookshops and things like that. And I bought and read a ton of them back in the back in the eighties and early nineties. But Lehman was successful in other countries as well, including Japan, where his books sold by the bucket load. So Japan going through a bit of an economic boom during the 80s um, and there was a, a big property boom as part of that including um, the opening of a load of amusement parks um, and indeed there was a Richard Lehman themed amusement park that was opened in 1989 to coincide with the publication of his book Funland so Funland is about like a, a kind of pier waterfront type uh, you know boardwalk type area in a California town um, but the Japanese opened this this Richard Lehman theme park called Dreamland so that the title of Funland was changed to dreamland in japan partly to cash in on the success of the nightmare on elm street films um, and yeah this japanese developer opened this slightly weird uh, richard labor themed theme park called dreamland so it had kind of horror stuff so horror theme rides like like ghost trains and things like that Um, but also had kind of more sexually explicit uh, exhibits and things like that as well Um, so dreamland sadly was only open for two or three years before closing down as that economic boom in japan kind of started to wane Um, but you can see and i will put up on screen um, some kind of more more recent photos of of what the abandoned place looks like and you can certainly see the influence of layman in both the kind of sexual content um, but also that the the slightly weird american style uh, creepy horror side of things as well um 
so yeah, not a lot of people know how successful Lehman was in Japan, but he really was um, a big, big horror author there in the 80s in particular. Uh, and also very successful in France. Um, so just as the just as the French in kind of the 50s and 60s in particular had really been into and really championed American crime writers like Jim Thompson and people like that, um, you know, they recognised the literary merit of, of authors like Thompson. Um, there was a movement in, in France that championed Lehman in the same way in the, the late 80s into the into the early 90s. So he had a lot of a lot of fans over there um, and was known in France as uh, Le Prince de la Croupe. Um, the Prince of the Rump. Um, so very well respected. And, and the French, I think, felt that, that Lehman was really tapping into something about the male psyche and, and writing about that in, in a way that other writers weren't. Um, so he was championed in particular um, in the, the French literary magazine Nouvelle Revue Française um, and was also um, nominated for the very prestigious French literary award, the Prix Goncourt, um, on two separate occasions. So the Prix Goncourt is kind of like the French equivalent of the Booker Prize. Um, but it does sometimes cover, you know, authors from the more popular end of the spectrum. Um, so authors who you wouldn't necessarily expect to see um, nominated for literary prizes, but who, but who French critics can really see some value in. Um, so, yeah, Lehman was, was nominated twice for that. Um, his supporters were disappointed that he didn't win. They blamed that on, um, on, on the fact that his work was translated, so it wasn't originally written in French. I think if he'd been a, an author who wrote in the French language, um, I think the view is he probably would have won at least on one of those occasions. So yes, Lehman, an author much more successful and revered outside the US than he was in his homeland. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to this video to an article I found online that has a ton more information about this. Um, so do check that out if you're interested. Um, and as always, thank you very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're reading good stuff. And I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.